What up players, it's Warboss Tay back up in this mug doing a tutorial. Today we're looking at the Imperial Guard Astropath. He comes in the Imperial Guard Advisors set of miniatures. Starting with Warpstone Glow, Warboss Tay Green, the most classic of colors, Sybarite Green, Screamer Pink, Mephiston Red. There we go. Rackarth Flesh. Othwan Gray. Stormhost Silver. Lead Belcher. Retributor Armor Known Oil Raiklin Flesh Shade Drukai Violet Quelia Green Shade And that's gonna be it. That's all the colors you need for this model. The Imperial Guard Astropath is one of uh, three models, I believe. You've also got the Master of the Fleet and the, oh, what's the other one? The bom Bombard Artillery guy. So I thought I'd paint this one up because I had a limited amount of colors, just trying to get back into the swing of things and wanted to paint a model that was pretty simple, but also uh, very, very evocative, very nice looking. So we're gonna start with Warpstone Glow. And as we get going, I wanted to mention that this is also a video appreciation video for Play It Painted. Play It Painted is an amazing YouTuber. If you follow any of my videos, you've already probably seen his and are subscribed to his channel. If not, the link is down below. So go check him out. He's always participating in my challenges. He's a friendly and helpful and very knowledgeable YouTuber who is uh, really active in his local community. I'm very happy to know him as I'm dropping my astropath all over the place. So thank you Play It Painted for being such a great active participant and for uh, helping me out as I figure out the uh, intricacies of my OBS and uh, Discord and just always inviting me to, to take part in your live streams. And uh, I'm really, really happy to know you and my lady boss is always uh, bugging me to ask you when when we can pick up biscuits or waffles or, <laughs> or pancakes, whichever the one is you're, you're thinking of giving away because uh, sh she loves she loves those those little guys. They look really great. All right, your Warpstone Glow is your first color and I base coated or I undercoated rather this miniature in a nice gray primer. I believe this was back when I was using um, either a Mechanica Standard Gray Primer or just a gray primer, spray primer you can get from uh, most any modeling company that makes these spray primers. I'm focusing on the robe because Warpstone Glow is such a beautifully vibrant color. I wanted it to... I, I'm trying to paint this guy up as close to the Games Workshop ideal as possible. I'm thinking of going with that for my uh, tutorials as I'm getting back into it, trying to paint up to what you see on the Games Workshop box art and their uh, standard paint colors and paint schemes, doing it my way and adding my own particular spin on it. And I think uh, it's gonna turn out really well. As you see in the back, I'm using a wet palette, which is basically just a plastic, um, it was like a model kit it, it held like the sprues and stuff and then I put some water at the bottom and then some paper towel on the top. You don't want to use uh, toilet paper or you don't want to use any kind of Kleenex because of the um, the chemicals and stuff that they put on top of it, the moisturizers and, and skin stuffs. You want just like a, a very absorbent kind of, you want an absorbent like paper towel Kind of surface which is why I, I love paper towels they, they work really well if you've got parchment paper that's even better use your parchment paper for your uh, wet palette 
and as you can see it goes on pretty thin but it's such a large surface area that it's really really easy to work on it's a it's a great uh, surface it's a great canvas Igor. Yes, Master. Focus the camera on the subject. I'm sorry, Master. It's been so long since I've worked this camera. Alright, you want to avoid his belt because his belt we're going to be painting separately. If you get any on anything else, like you can see the sleeve cuffs and oh, I'm getting a little bit on his belt, then uh, don't worry, we're going to paint over anything. That's the main thing with painting miniatures. A lot of people are afraid of getting too detailed because they're worried that their colors are going to uh, they're gonna make mistakes and have to repaint but you know don't worry about it you just paint over it screamer pink the whole process of painting is uh, touching up you put on the colors and then 80% of the time you're touching up what you painted little mistakes that you made screamer pink is such a fantastic contrast to that green look at that it's like this purplish red that just pops out really really nice and you can see that green is still pretty wet because I've been using my wet palette so that it can flow and uh, I might get a little sloppy there but I just want to get the colors down because the sooner I get them down the sooner they can dry the sooner I can put this guy down and uh, go watch some Disney Plus with the lady boss so it can dry One of the things that I had to teach myself was that you need to give your paint time to dry, uh, especially at the beginning when you want to, your excitement is really high, you want to paint all of the model, and as soon as you put down a color, you want to jump onto the next part, and it's really easy to forget that you need, you need to let your colors dry, or else your paint is going to get uh, splotchy, mixed up, and it's going to go running all over. You don't want that. So I'm painting the cuffs and the lining, the inside of his hood, with Screamer Pink. Anytime I'm painting base colors, you want to make sure that you're using a brush where you're creating a nice point to the tip of your brush. So once you get your paint on, just kind of spin it around on your wet palette so that you can get a nice pointed tip. That way it'll go only where you want it to. You practice your brush control and your paint will only go where you intend for it to go. Lead Belcher is our next color. It's a silver, gray silver paint and we're going to be painting his staff. I'm using a cork, a piece of cork with blue tack to hold my miniature on it. I believe the last product review I did was a Citadel uh, handle, and um, I, but, but I started painting and I started just using this piece of cork with blue tack to hold my miniatures on place, in place, and I'm just so used to it that I've, I rarely use the Citadel painting handle. So as you can see, I'm painting all the way up the staff, all the way to the top. Rackarth Flesh is our next color. It's one of my favorite colors to paint. If you remember my video from the day 17 of the July painting challenge, what are your top five colors? And I really like Rackarth Flesh because you could use it for so many applications. Right now I'm using it for this parchment strip that's hanging down the staff. You could also use it for pale skin. Do I, I, I think I'm going to be using it also for this guy's skin tones. And you can also use it for bone colored armor or bone skulls and uh, bones that are hanging. And uh, it's a thick paint, so you want to make sure you thin it down on your wet palette and you can do multiple applications 
or just spread it out so you don't get it all globbed up. The worst thing you can do when you're putting on your base colors is to apply paint on too thickly so that you don't have uh, enough space and your paint gets stuck on the model and ends up going everywhere and ends up being really messy. So best to go thin. Oh yeah, there I go. So his three skin areas are his hands and his face and neck. Very simple, easy. That's another reason why I wanted to choose this model to get back into filming my tutorials was because I knew that anybody could pick up the paints and work on this model. It's not gonna require a lot of intense painting technique and it's good for me to get back into the practice of it as well as showing off, you know, you could be a beginner painter or, or an intermediate painter and still have a great time painting this model. It's not, it's not a big, bulky, heroic looking model. It's not got a lot of uh, showy pieces, but I think it's a nice sculpt that you can practice your techniques on and create a very good finish that is pretty eye-catching. When you're working on the face, because it's under the hood, you wanna make sure that you're holding the model at an angle where you can just gently tap it with the tip of your brush so that you don't get that bone color on the lining of this hood. Now we're gonna let our model dry for a bit because we want all of these areas to be dry when we go back to uh, work on the washes. But just showing off the model here, you can already see there's some really, really nice colors and uh, it looks really, really good. Oh, okay, I guess I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna take a step away, but I decided to uh, add one more color. This is Dawnstone. Igor, focus the camera. Sorry, master. I stepped away for a minute. What do you mean, stepped away? You're, you're my camera operator, man. I know, but I, I heard a, a cat in the neighborhood. Cats are so delicious. All right, Dawnstone, we're going to be using as the base for his... Uh, rope that's hanging around or that's cinching his robe shut no idea why <laughs> if I could be honest I don't remember why I think I have the Games Workshop art open on my computer at the time and retributor armor I believe I was like oh gray rope I guess so yeah you don't want it to be such a bright color to pop out like a gold or yellow the gold is just going to be used for detail, but yeah, if that rope was like bright red or some kind of flash gets yellow, I think it would have been a little too distracting. I hope we're hanging out and uh, painting together. If you're not even working on this astropath, I hope you watch these videos and think about just having them on in the background as you work because I try to go over the techniques as well as um, why and how I look at painting my miniatures in all of these videos. For those of you who've been watching my tutorials for a while, you remember how I used to kind of talk about anything in these videos that relate to whatever I'm working on. Okay, so the gold is for the uh, symbol that he's holding with his right hand the Imperial Eagle belt buckle, the two little dangly bits at the end, and the symbol on the top of his staff. I believe I'm going back with my Screamer Pink here and working on the cuffs and just cleaning it up. I believe this is Screamer Pink. I also painted the little um, parchment seal, purity seal, the wax part that's affixing the parchment to his staff. Yep, and just cleaning up the inside of his hood. So that's how he looks right now. Pretty nice. You can see once you've got that bone color down, what uh, nice detail his face, his facial expression, the scowl in his cheeks. I'm going right back in, I think with the Retributor armor and I'm painting this gold collar around his neck.
Warpstone Glow again is a robe color. I think I'm going in and just fixing, touching up some areas. And this is my second application. You could see some of that gray primer peeking through underneath the original coat of this Warpstone Glow. So this second application is just to uh, thicken that color and solidify it, make sure that you don't really see that gray primer underneath. If you've got such a large surface area like this robe with one color on it, I found that multiple applications not only builds up the color and covers that uh, gray primer, but it also allows you to uh, make it a little bit brighter. By building up the color, you make your, your color a little bit brighter. And it's more, it's more eye-catching. Now you might think, well, why don't I just load up my brush with the color the first time so I don't have to do the second color? It's because if you put the color on too thick, if the paint goes on too thick, it might obscure some of the details. It might create some unsightly bulges of paint over the surfaces, like the larger surfaces. It's always better to do multiple applications, thin down coats, rather than one fat uh, glob of paint. Look at that, he's already looking really good. So we're moving on to Othuan Gray, and we're already starting to highlight, do our highlights. And the Othuan Gray is going to be applied to the Dawnstone of the rope around his waist. So because this is a highlight, we're going to really be focusing on the sculpt, which you can see looks like braided rope. And we don't want to drag a whole a line of paint down this braided rope. So I'm going to be trying to do short, shorter paint strokes or brush strokes down the length. So it, the, the goal is you want to have it pick up, have the paint be picked up only on the sculpted braided areas. This technique also works really great on any kind of rope or uh, braided braided um, kind of surface. So like if you're working on a model who has braids in their hair or there's like a corded, corded wire, like snake chain, then this works well on that too. But yeah, you don't want to, if you drag a line of thick paint across that belt, then it's all going to get stuck and the detail is going to get uh, lost. So that's pretty good. Real easy, simple step. If you mess up, just go back and uh, repaint the part that you painted over with the original color, which is the robe for uh, Warpstone Green, or Warpstone Glow, rather. Next, we're gonna be using Known Oil. Known Oil is going to be kind of our cheat because it's going to work in the recesses. It's gonna flow all over the different surface areas and give it a nice natural shading. It's going to dull down some of the bright gold of that Retributor armor. And there we go. Clumsy Butterfingers me dropping the model again. That's a good thing about why you want to have, <laughs> have a good uh, handle to hold on to your models with because you need to make sure your hand can wrap around whatever you're using. I know some people use like prescription pill bottles, old paint bottles. Just put a little bit of blue tack on the top and it'll do really well. I just really, I really like this cork handle and I got it for only two or three bucks at a hobby shop or craft store rather, not a hobby shop. Known oil is also great for painting onto pale, pallid skin. I used to use it a lot for my vampire counts because it makes the skin look really sickly and bloodless and it uh, gives a natural or really nice looking shading to that skin. The, th the trick with non oil though is it dries pretty glossy sometimes, so you want to make sure you don't use uh, too much of it, and you want to spread it out across the entire surface of the model. So I think it looks like I only used it on the sleeves and the staff, and yep, 
and the, the skin because now I'm going to be using Coelia Green Shade for the robe. So the green of the robe is the only thing you're painting in this Coelia Green Shade. Everything else, the belt, the sleeves, the cuffs, I mean the staff and the skin and the inside of the hood. Quilia Green Shade is a nice bluish green wash that uh, is going to go into the recesses, create some beautiful shadows. As long as you drag the paint across the surface, don't let it pool in any area or else you're going to have big puddles that are going to dry and look really ugly. You don't want it to uh, go on too thick. And as I'm uh, applying this color, I just want to point out that Play It Painted is uh, really, really big in his local community because he's created his own Discord server where he could have his local uh, hobbyists, local people from his games shop, also join and work on their hobby. And it's really just, I, I wanted to dedicate this tutorial, this coming back, <laughs> back to form tutorial to him because he is a, a paragon in our community. And I'm gonna try to do July appreciation videos for everybody who's taking part in the challenge, but uh, I really wanted this one to go out to him, dedicated to him, because uh, not only is he a patron on Patreon of my studio, but he's, like I said, he's such a, such a prominent member in his community. He's so helpful. He's kind of what we all aspire to be. Someone who's helpful and encouraging and positive and just wants to elevate everybody so that they could be their best. So Play It Painted, thank you so much for inspiring me and for taking part in all of my challenges. And uh, I, I hope you enjoy this video, man. Drew Kai Violet is the next color we're using and it's a shade for all of the red areas. So along with the known oil, once that known oil is dry, I'm adding this Drew Kai Violet to add uh, just a little bit of color to, oh, not, I'm sorry, not the red areas, but to the skin. That's right, this Drukai Violet creates a very sickly looking bruise, almost bruised and yeah, look at that. Oof, once it dries, it's real nice. So keep it, keep it off of the red areas, use it on the skin tones. Raikland Flesh Shade, now we're building up all of the shade colors on the skin. Whereas the Drukai Violet and the Known Oil created lots of dark, cold shadows, this Raikland Flesh Shade is going to add a little bit of a warm brown to all of that so it's it's not gonna make him look like <laughs> like a healthy beach bum like Matthew McConaughey but it is gonna give him a little bit of uh, life a little bit of color a little bit of that that warm warm tone to contrast the dark Now we're going back to Mephiston Red here. And I believe this was for the, yeah, the, the purity seal. The wax of the purity seals were uh, painting over that Screamer Pink one in the front. There's one in the back. So you wanna hit it with this Mephiston Red. That bright red color is gonna pop and it's gonna create a nice spot color to break up all the silver and gold and the parchment. Aw oh, yeah baby, Warboss Tay Green. Now this color is a little bit more pale than the bright and vibrant Warpstone Glow, but it is a lighter color, so I'm using it as a highlight. Now what you wanna do is you make sure your paintbrush has a nice thin point and we go on the folds where the material is bunched up. You wanna make sure the shade underneath is dried enough so that you're not gonna be dripping, or it's not gonna be getting into the, the shade and mixing up the colors. And we're just gonna be slightly dragging it down all of the raised areas where the light would naturally hit it. If you have a hard time figuring out where you would need to put your highlights, just put your model on the table and shine a light ahead and a little bit off to one side. And that's gonna show where the light naturally would pick up if you were under the sun or in a ship where you would still see where those shadows occur and you'd be able to work 
your colors in the right places where the light would reflect. Okay, I'm going to be using Warpstone Glow again to uh, just fix any mistakes you make. If it looks like your colors are going on too thick, then just paint a little bit more of the base color, which is Warpstone Glow. Yeah, anytime you use a shade, like we use our Coelia Green shade, if it gets over the flatter surfaces and it dries, then you're just going to be fixing it up so that you don't have shadows on the flat raised surfaces where it wouldn't make any sense. Again, we're focusing our highlight color Warboss Tay Green on the raised areas of his robe. And he's got a bunch down at the bottom because that's where all the folds are bunched up. His vertical paint strokes. You just have the paintbrush right uh, on the tip of the brush and we're just lightly feathering it on. You're not using a lot of color here. Our war boss Tay Green. As you can see, it's not so uh, vibrant as Warpstone Glow was a uh, really bright, almost yellowish green, and uh, the Warboss Tay Green has more of a subtle tone. It's not as vibrant. It will create a nice, uh, a nice highlight to contrast the the vibrancy of the warp, warp stone glow. I think also too, when I was painting this model, I didn't want him to be too brightly green. I wanted the robe to look almost muted. But it's it's hard because green is such a such a such an eye-catching color. So when I was figuring out the color scheme for him and looking and using the Games Workshop website as a reference, looking at that, I thought, well, I want to keep his robe a, a little bit muted. So I was I picked Warp's, uh, Warboss Tay Green as the highlight color. You can still have that vibrant Warpstone glow underneath, but as a highlight color, picking up the light that Warboss Tay Green is going to subtly shift the colors so that it looks uh, a little bit more muted than if I were to highlight with a Moot Green, which is a very bright yellow green. All right, I've given the miniature some time to dry and look, look at the skin color. It looks so, so dark and uh, really, really like sickly looking. So Sybarite Green, as you can see, it's uh, veering even further away from the uh, yellow green of Warpstone Glow and uh, it's the next obvious highlight color to step up from Warboss Tay Green. You could also use Skarsnik Green which is uh, the next color up if you're painting like orcs and goblins. Sybarite Green has just a little bit more of a mint chocolate chip color to it which I really really like and for, uh, for this model I thought it would look really nice. And now I want mint chocolate chip ice cream. Igor, buddy. Yes, monster. Oh, are you using your new Igor voice now? <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot I talk like this now, monster. I talk like the other Igor voice originally, and then I turned into a sort of Michael Caine impersonation. All right, well. <laughs> well, well, welcome back, Igor. Oh, thank you, Master. You ever catch that cat? No, no, sadly, no. He got away from me. 
All right, a fun place to paint your highlight colors now are on the hood of the robe because as you can see, there's some really nice textures where you can play with where the light is reflecting off of the model. And uh, it's depending on where your light source is and uh, where you want to focus the highlights. You can see where the light is reflecting off the model right now. Those are some natural places where you could put that Sibrite green highlight color and you can work up even more. I think it's just the light reflecting off of the paint naturally. So I'm going to try to emulate that light source by picking up where it's bouncing off the robe. Yep. Now Sibrite Green is what I like to call, call the pop color. When I'm working I like to do three colors, the base coat, uh, the shade which I don't really count, and then reapply the base coat. And then I do a first highlight, which was our Warboss Tay Green. And the Sibrite Green is what I call the pop color because from a tabletop, this is the color that you kind of want to see most when the light hits the model. You don't want it to be overwhelming, but when you're looking at a model, the pop color is the one that makes it look uh, interesting and gives it some depth. By applying it not as thickly and not as prominently, you don't have it across the entire model, you're really just trying to pick up the highest edges and raised surfaces. You're able to uh, create a color combination that pops. Focus, Igor. Focus the camera. I'm sorry, master. Why, why did you revert to your old voice again? I don't know, master. I'm being quite indecisive today. All right, it's looking really nice now. We're just finishing up uh, where the light is reflecting. You know, fun fact, I actually filmed this video uh, a little while back when I was still trying to work some kinks out in my tutorials and uh, I had this I had this tutorial on a, on the back burner and I thought, oh, I'll just record the audio for it later. But um, I wanted to, to break it up because now I'm, I'm getting back into filming these tutorials and I'm uh, following my old formula, so. It's, uh, it's actually coming out really well. I'm really happy with how this video turned out. Except for the little blurriness here and there. I mean, if we're, you're painting along with me, if you just got this video playing in the background and we're just hanging out, uh, then it's really, it's really not bad. Rackarth Flesh is the color we're gonna bring back our Astropath here, give him a little bit more of a brighter skin tone and you can see I've got it right on the tip of my brush and I'm only focusing on the nose, his lips, and the little area where his uh, cheeks go down into his, his chin line. I'm leaving the darker areas, recessed areas, and the shadowy areas in uh, the dark with the old, or with the shade that we applied and we're only focusing on the most prominent areas to bring them out with this highlight color. For his hands that would mean his knuckles and I'm it looks like I, I worked on the very bottom of his hand and on this side it's his fingers and just the uh, bone structure of his hand there on the right. And look at that you can tell the difference because the light is now picking up only his nose his mouth and his cheeks where we painted but it leaves his neck and uh, his eye sockets really sunken and man look at that effect isn't that terrific? I mean, it's not going to win me any golden demons, but it's such a simple technique to paint and highlight your uh, faces that it's really going to look good on, on any model that you paint. Stormhole Silver is a bright silver color that is going to be used to highlight our staff. And 
when I was deciding on how I wanted to paint it, I decided I'd only apply it on one side of the staff to make like that was where the light source is coming from. So if you turn the model, you're not going to see his whole staff covered in this bright silver color. It's only going to be where the model is facing. So I wanted it to look like if you were turning the model, the staff would turn darker. You would see more of that shade and the lead belcher color. I'm also adding that Stormhost Silver to the detail of his golden icon at the top there. As well as his necklace and the Aquila. The Akia. Aquila? Aquila and the bee? <laughs> oh man. All right, so uh, it creates the image that, or the illusion that light is reflecting off the gold. You don't want it to look like silver on gold, but you want it to look just like the light is reflecting off of the gold. It's an optical illusion, and it's a really simple one, but uh, I like it. Going back to the Screamer Pink, we're bringing the color back up onto the cuffs. Hopefully I fixed that little mistake. You could see right at the edge of the cuff there where it meets the robe. But I think I was looking at the model at the time and I was like, it, it needs that, that pinkish purple. I couldn't leave it with the uh, non oil, keeping it that dark. I really wanted to bring it back up. To make a model tabletop ready where people are gonna look at it and be like, oh wow, you painted it, it's pretty good. What you should always do is a base coat, a shade, and then just reapply the base coat. If you don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the highlighting and what colors to use to bring up the highlights, then just repaint the base color over your shaded, uh, over your shaded color and it's going to look really nice. So now you can see I'm using a Micron pen, 0.001. And I'm just creating horizontal lines across my parchment there. And uh, it's just, just because the only other way you would do it would be to take a very small amount of black paint onto the tip of a very, very small brush and then do the exact same thing. By using this Micron .001 pen in black, I'm cutting out all of the effort pretty much and just very easily creating what looks like lines of script like a whole book. It's my, <laughs> it's my, um, yeah, the textbook. Then we're taking our Oath One Gray. We're thinning this down. And what are we doing? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, we're, we're bumping up the color even more on the belt his rope yeah it's looking really really good under a nice daylight source uh, my lamp I think I switched out all the light bulbs so they went from this yellowish uh, warm light to more of a, a, a white light, a daylight color. And it's really helped me to figure out how the colors actually look on a model once you turn the light off and you put it on the table. So I believe that's it, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, my astropath, my Imperial Guard advisor, astropath, looking fantastic and ready to go on the battlefield and not really do anything because I don't think they're very powerful, but hey, he looks great. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We're going to uh, end it here with a final showcase. And uh, I did up his base and that was it. I didn't really do anything else. Look at that. That is a fantastic looking model. Once the paint is all dried, you can see all the detail and I'm really pleased with it. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Warboss Taste Studios back in action. So happy to be doing these again. And I hope you're having a great day. We will see you in the next video.